Once again, welcome to our Monday devotion. We're going through the Bible. We're on the book of Acts, part 7, and the title of our devotion today is, It Seemed Good. Join me in prayer. Father, once again, we come before you this morning, thankful again for your word and the Holy Spirit that teaches us. And so we ask once again, Lord God, that through your Holy Spirit, that you would enlighten us of your word. And I pray, Lord God, that every listener, Lord God, every viewer, Lord God, Lord, will gain something out of your word today, Lord God. And I pray, Father God, that every viewer, Lord God, will share this word or this video with others as well. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. So we're going through the Bible on the book of Acts, part 7. The title of our devotion today is, It Seemed Good. So we'll be reading Acts chapter 15, verse 25 from the English Standard Version, then Acts chapter 15, verse 28, also from the English Standard Version. Acts 15, 25 says, It has seemed good to us, having come to one accord, to choose men and send them to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Acts 15, 28 says, And it seemed good to the Holy Spirit, and to us to lay on you no greater burden than these requirements. So let's read the devotion. One of the major themes in Acts is the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In chapter 15, we read that Paul and Barnabas traveled to Jerusalem from Antioch to discuss with the apostles and elders about the question of circumcision. Men from Judea were teaching the Gentile brothers that they needed to be circumcised according to the law of Moses to be saved. We read that Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with these men. At the Jerusalem council, we saw that there was also much debate. But through the word of wisdom given through James, the Holy Spirit directed those at Jerusalem at the Jerusalem Council to make the right decision at the vital turning point in church history. Jesus had promised that the Holy Spirit would guide them into all truth, according to John 16, verse 13. We also read of how the council ended, and it uses the phrase, it seemed good three times. This showed that the unanimous decision of the entire church, having come to one accord, the Holy Spirit draws into unity all of God's people into one body of Christ. Here we see how the Holy Spirit gives clear direction and complete unity, which are essential for the progress of God's work. Prayer for today is, Dear Lord, thank you for revelation through the Holy Spirit. We continue to ask for the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into making us wise, into making wise decisions and to bring unity among all believers. In Jesus' name, amen. Your assignment is to read Acts chapter 14 and chapter 15. So let's discuss, let's discuss the devotion today. Now this devotion tells us that the Holy Spirit gives clear direction and complete unity which are essential for the progress of God's work. So it says that unity is essential for the progress of God's work. So we're going to talk about unity today. Or in other words, without unity, the work of the Lord will not progress or move forward. And no matter how hard we work, we will not move forward without unity. No matter how many workers or volunte volunteers or ministries we have, we may have hundreds of workers and volunteers and ministries, but without unity, the work of the Lord will not progress. This is why the Holy Spirit is continuously at work uniting the body of Christ, because without unity, the work of the Lord will not progress. Now, on the other end, that is why the enemy, Satan, works so hard in bringing division and disunity in the local church and to divide the body of Christ. So I just shared with you that the Holy Spirit continuously is at work uniting us. On the other hand, the enemy, Satan, works so hard to bring division and disunity in the local church 
and also to divide the body of Christ. Because the enemy knows that no matter what we do, without unity, the work of the Lord will not progress. So I want you to be aware of the tactics of the enemy, Satan, which is to cause strife, division, and disunity amongst us. I want you also to be aware that strife, division, and disunity comes through many different forms and avenues. So it comes through different avenues. It uses different avenues, comes in different forms through differences in personality. Sometimes or many times within the church, because of the differences of personalities and personality clashes, Satan causes division amongst the church members through offenses. When we get offended, Satan can cause division. So when people get offended, they tend to, um, you know, to divide uh, those that are for and those that are against. Through differences in ideas, Satan can cause division. So just in the simple differences of ideas, Satan can cause division. In fact, Satan, the enemy, will use everything to his advantage to try and cause division in the church. He will try to use everything and anything to his advantage to try to bring division in the church. Again, why? Because without unity, we can never progress in the work of the Lord. And so he works so hard to cause division in the churches. I know, of ch I know of churches that divided over whether or not they should use an organ. Meron isang church na karoon ng division, na karoon ng church split. Dahil yung isang grupo gustong gumamit ng organ or what we call a keyboard. Meron isang grupo ayo nila, so na karoon ng division, nag-split yung church. Meron isang grupo na walang organ, meron isang grupo na may organ. I know of churches that divided over sound system issues. Uh, decision over what kind of sound system to use. Nagkaroon ng division over a simple choice of sound system. Nag-divide ang church. I know of churches that divided over whether they should use padded chairs or church benches. Simple lamang yung issue. Whether you use padded or soft chairs or church benches. The point here is... Satan will use anything and everything possible to his advantage to try and cause division in the church. He will use everything to try to cause division. And not only division in terms of a church split, but also division amongst co-ministers, division amongst leaders, within different ministry teams, or amongst members of the team or members of the church, etc., etc., because where there is division of any kind, the work of the Lord cannot prosper or progress. And so again, while the Holy Spirit is continuously at work causing us to be united, the enemy certain, Satan is also continuously at work trying to bring division, making use of all avenues possible to cause division because Satan understands that where there is division, the work of the Lord will not prosper or progress. But where there is unity, the work of the Lord will prosper and progress. So what is my advice to you, members of the church, members of Church of the Risen Christ? What is my advice to you? Let me read 1 Peter 5, 8. It says here, be alert, be on watch. Your enemy, the, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So the enemy, Satan, is just looking for people that he can use to plant seeds of division. And so the Bible tells us to be alert and to be watchful, to not allow the enemy, Satan, to make use of whatever situation to plant seeds of division in our hearts or seeds of division amongst the church. So in other words, if you see an, the enemy planting a seed of division in the church, then it's our responsibility to deal with that and to remove that seed and to plant seeds of unity. So don't allow the enemy to plant seeds of division in your heart. 
Remember, all those seeds are very small, but those seeds can grow to become a tree, and those trees will bear fruits of division that will not only hinder the work of God, but eventually, if left to continue growing, it will eventually destroy the church. So if you are a leader, be wise and don't allow the enemy to plant seeds of division between you and other leaders. If you are part of a ministry team or uh, a team, uh, uh, any team of, in the church, be wise and don't allow the enemy to plant seeds of division between you and other members of the team or ministry. Amongst each other, as a church family, be wise and don't allow the enemy to plant seeds of division amongst you, even as members of the church family. Instead, by all means, strive to keep the unity amongst each other so that the work of God can continually progress. By all means, if the enemy uses all means and avenues to try to cause division, the same with us. Let us use all means, all avenues to keep the unity, to strive to keep the unity in our hearts and amongst each other so that the work of God can continue to progress. I pray that this message um, spoke to you. I pray that this message will be shared by you so that we can continue to progress in God's work. Again, although this message is for everybody or for all Christians, but let me say that this message is for Church of the Risen Christ. Share it with other members of this church and let's progress in the work of God. Amen. Join me in prayer. Father, we come before you once again this day. Thankful for your word and the Holy Spirit. I believe, Lord God, that everything that we have been sharing lately, Lord God, in the devotion as well as on Sunday, Lord God, has been so in line, Lord God, and that you are at, truly at work, Lord God, building your church. And so, Father, I pray right now, Lord God, if there be any seed of division in Church of the Risen Christ, that it would be uprooted, Lord, in Jesus' name. If there be any seeds of division, Lord God, planted in any heart, Lord God, of any ministry, leader, or team, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that those seeds of division would be uprooted, Lord God, be thrown away and left to die, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. But I pray, Lord God, even as I pray, now I plant seeds of unity, Lord God, and seeds of love, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that as one body, Lord God, as Church of the Risen Christ, that we will strive to keep the unity, Lord God, so that we can continue to progress in the work that you have given us. To you, Lord God, all glory, all honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So I hope and pray that the word of God spoke to you today. Remember, after watching, share it with a number, another member of this church family. God bless you. Have a great week. See you Wednesday. See you Sunday. And always remember that God is and he will always be good. God bless you.